Hey guys, today we're going to go through how to use the SMACD indicator and the ProRelargos SMACD divergence indicator. I will be using it trading DAX and you will get to follow me doing that live. The first thing you need to do is to download the SMACD indicator and the SMACD divergence indicator. You can find both of them on the ProRelargos website. Go to ProRelargos.com, click the uh, red button in the bottom right corner saying free SMACD indicator. Click on get it now in the bottom left corner. Fill in your email and the files will be sent to you automatically. So what is SMACD? Well, S stands for stochastic and MACD stands for moving average convergence divergence. So uh, MACD is a frequently used indicator to uh, trade trends and to um, identify overbought and oversold conditions. The SMACD indicator is a combination of that MACD indicator together with the stochastic oscillator. The stochastic MACD has a couple of advantages. The primary advantage is that it allows for relative comparison between indexes and stocks with different absolute values. So MACD will give a high value to a high value index like uh, US Tech or, or Wall Street Cash, um, whereas the SMACD will um, represent the index in a relative format uh, relative to the closing price of the index. So this makes the SMACD much more versatile and usable for algorithm development as it can be reused over multiple indexes without having to change any values. Let me give you an example in real time. So here we have the DAX chart. We are on the one second time frame and I have added the MACD indicator in the bottom of the screen. As you can see here the value uh, ranges between uh, 2.6 uh, approximately down to uh, minus 3. I have now pulled up the Swedish OMX index. It uh, has a much lower absolute value than the DAX market. DAX is at 16,000 something and the Swedish index is at approximately 2,300. So on this index which has a much lower absolute value you can see that the uh, MACD values are ranging between 0.3 down to approximately minus 0.4. So this, this makes the MACD indicator quite hard to reuse between indexes without changing any values. So let's say for the DAX index uh, you are at an overbought level if you are at, at uh, a MACD value of 1 but a MACD value of 1 on the OMX index is never going to happen. So this is the issue that the SMACD indicator is solving. If I go ahead and add the stochastic MACD indicator to the uh, OMX chart, you can see here that the values are ranging between uh, approximately 38 down to minus 40. And now I've added the stochastic MACD indicator to the German index and you can see that we are ranging uh, between the same kind of values approximately minus 40 up to uh, uh, plus 40. So this makes the stochastic MACD indicator much more usable as it can be reused over multiple indexes. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is the stochastic MACD divergence indicator. So for you who don't know what a divergence is, let me show you that quickly. So in short, what the SMACD divergence indicator is doing is pointing out where the uh, stochastic MACD is forming highs or lows that are exceeding the corresponding highs or lows of the price. So a bullish divergence uh, appears when the stochastic MACD forms uh, two rising lows that correspond with two falling lows on the price. So let me show you an example uh, of that from today. Um, this might not be the best example but it will uh, give you uh, an idea of what I'm talking about. We have a low here at this point and we have a lower low at this point. Let me draw a line of that. So at the first low here we had a um, SMACD value of minus, minus 22.3 approximately and on the second low which was a, a, a lower low a, in, in the price chart we actually had a higher SMACD value. We only had a negative value of minus 20.8. So we have a divergency. We had a lower low in price but the 
lower and lower in price actually had a higher SMACD value. And that is a bullish divergency. And that is what the SMACD divergence indicator is pointing out for us. So we can save time and not try to find these divergences ourselves. So to add the SMACD divergence indicator to the chart, click on price here, click add indicator, find the SMACD divergence indicator, click it. And now you can see these arrows here. These are pointing out bullish as well as bearish um, divergences. So whenever you see a green arrow saying up, that's a bullish divergency. Whenever you see a red arrow saying down, that's a bearish divergency. And now you might say, well, this doesn't look very good. There are a lot of arrows, but they are not really pointing out the highs or the lows. And that's only natural. The SMACD divergence indicator works best when you adapt the different values and settings for the time frame and the index that you are going to run it on. And how do you find those settings? Well, that's what I'm going to show you now. So the SMACD divergence indicator has five different settings. If you click on it and click configure, you can set these five settings manually. If I change the, let's say, SMACD period from 25 to 10, uh, you can see that uh, it changed the number of signals. So this was only one out of five settings. Uh, now I'm going to show you how you can quickly find the five best values for these five settings by running a backtest. So when you downloaded and imported all files from ProRealAlgos.com, you uh, actually got a system file called SMACD Divergence Backtester. So find that system file and click modify. If you look here in the variable optimization, you can see that there are five different variables. These are the five settings that I just talked about. So what we're going to do is to run a backtest of these five variables to find the best values for the intended time frame and for the intended index. So if you click on this nut wrench icon here, uh, you can change the settings of the backtest of the uh, variable optimization. Um, the default settings are pretty good, but you might want to change these up a bit. If you don't know how to do that, we have made videos on backtests and optimizations uh, just a few months ago. So please watch that. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, click out of this and then I'm going to run a backtest with a uh, spread of one. And I'm going to use it trading the DAX index on a one second time frame. So this system has four different options. You can choose to only backtest long trades, you can choose to only backtest short trades, and you can choose to backtest both. The fourth option is after how many candlesticks, how many bars do you want to exit the trade? When you're trading this manually, you will of course use a, another exit conditions. You will not only just sell uh, consequently after X number of bars, but using an exit condition like this are really making sure that the backtests are finding those good entry points. You, you can also, of course, use the SMACD divergence indicator to find good exit points as well. So I want to backtest both long and short trades. So in this backtest, I want to exit the trades after uh, 30 bars. So the backtest has finished. I'm going to select a backtest with a high win rate. Mm, I'm going to use this, this one, which has a value combination of uh, a, a SMACD period of 25, minimum bar range 10, maximum bar range 140. The overbought level is set at 30 and the oversold level is set at minus 25. So what we have done now is that we have found the optimal settings for the SMACD divergence indicator for this specific time frame and for the specific index. Now let's add the settings to the SMACD divergence indicator that we have added to the price chart. Um, click on the SMACD divergence, click configure. The backtest showed us that we should use a SMACD period of uh, 25. It told us that we should use a minimum bar range of 10 it told us to use a maximum bar range of 140. The overbought level should be set at 30 and the oversold level at minus 25. So now let's look at the chart. Let's close down the backtest. Uh, we can also 
uh, close down the SMACD indicator down here. Now let's look at the chart where this SMACD divergence indicator have added or pointed out that we uh, have a strong divergence in the stochastic MACD. If I zoom in here, you can see that we have pretty clearly a good bullish uh, SMACD divergence here. It pointed that out, that was uh, really good. You can't expect it to point out every, uh, every single um, low on the chart, but it will give you very, very good hints and very good points to uh, enter your uh, trades. You should, of course, not only use the SMACD divergence indicator to, to make your trades, uh, you should combine it with whatever else you, uh, you are using, like, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know, Fibonacci, volume, uh, etc. You should not use the SMACD divergence indicator only to, uh, as the sole indicator, as a condition to enter uh, a trade. Uh, let's look a bit further. It pointed out a divergence here as well. That was good. Uh, a bullish divergence. Uh, it showed one here as well. Not as good. Probably when exiting the trade in 30 bars, that was a win, but uh, this one was a false positive. Again, you should not only use this SMACD divergence indicator as a sole condition to enter trade. So this is the way to find those optimal values for the different settings in the SMACT divergence indicator. Recommend that you run this backtest on more than 10,000 units that I did. So to find even stronger SMACT divergences, you should be looking at multiple time frames. So here we are running it on the one second time frame. If you're going to trade DAX, I suggest you open up four different time frames, like perhaps the one second, the uh, one minute, the four hour, the daily time frame and perhaps even a fifth time frame like the one hour time frame, you find the optimal settings for that index for the five different time frames. If the SMACD divergence indicator would point out a, a divergence in multiple time frames at the same time, then you can consider that a very, very strong signal to enter a trade or to exit a trade. So that was the introduction to SMACD. It was the introduction to the SMACD divergency. And I showed you how to find the optimal settings for the intended time frame and for the intended index. In the next video, I'm going to use this SMACD divergency indicator to make some trading myself. I hope you'll watch that too. So thank you for watching. I will see you soon. Bye.